Hello, and welcome to Phil LeBron's Computer Networking Lab. You're watching the instructional video called Security AAA Authentication with a Radius Server. We are currently viewing the test router through the hyper terminal. Let's take a look at the running configuration. We can see that the AAA new model has been activated. We can also see that the authentication is going to use the radius server on the VTY lines. I have defined the radius server at 10.0.0.11 and gave it a key of philobrown.1 now we're on the server radius1 let's take a look at the active directory users and computers to see what accounts I have created ahead of time in preparation for this video I created a group called Network Admins and I've put a number of people in that group. These are people who will be able to access the Cisco router using the Radius server. Now let's install the Radius server. I'm going to open up the server manager. I'll activate the Add Roles and Features wizard. We've been through this wizard before, so I'll quickly go through it. I'll click on the Network Policy and Access Services, which contains the Radius server. I'll make sure that the Network Policy service is selected and then install the program. Okay, the program's installed. I'll open up the network service policy so I can configure the radius server. Okay, this is a network policy server. Let's expand the commands in the council tree. We will be configuring the radius clients and the network policies. I want to verify that the network policy server has already started and that it is registered with the Active Directory. I'll create a new Radius client. I will call it the test router because that is the name that I gave to the router itself. And I'll put in this IP address. This is a shared secret between them so that they can authenticate with each other. I'll move the taskbar out of the way so we'll have more room. Now let's take a look at the network policies. We already have two of them here. I'm going to create a new policy. I'll call it Cisco Radius. I want to add a condition that says that members of the network admins will be allowed to authenticate to the router.
Remember, this is the group that I previously created in Active Directory. Notice it's in the Philip Brown domain. If the person meets the criteria, I can either allow or deny them access to the router. I do not need to encrypt the radius packets, so I'll choose the unencrypted method. Here are a number of constraints that we can use, so I do not need to configure them. I am able to change the time or day that the person can access the router, but I'll leave it at the default of all time. We do not need the point-to-point -point protocol, so I'll delete this. I'm also going to add an attribute that will make anyone who will authenticate using this policy automatically have level 15 access on the Cisco routers. I do not need to have any encryption on the radius packets, so I'll deselect these. Here we can see that the policy we just created at the bottom of the list, but we actually want it to be at the top. The policies at the top will be evaluated first. Now let's try logging into the test router using a username from the radius server. Yes, we were able to log in. And notice that we're in level 15 because of the attribute we added. We can see that we have more commands than we would have in level 1. Radius servers are useful devices for providing authentication and authorization to numerous devices. I hope this video has been informative and I thank you for viewing.